As the police officers arrived on the scene, naturally their first question is, was this girl with anyone? What happened to her? How did she arrive? What's going on? And as it was in the morning, the people who were at the reception the night before were not the same people who were at the reception in the morning. So naturally they told them, you know what, we're not the same people, we weren't here, but what we can do is we can show you the CCTV. Now the CCTV footage would show Velvine arriving with her male friend, as you've seen, and her and the male friend booked the reception and they weren't seen for the rest of the evening. They identified the male friend as Joseph Njenga Muremi. Police would get in touch with Joseph and Joseph would tell the police that he in fact had checked out the previous night before at 10 p.m. So he was saying that he didn't even sleep in the same room as Velvine. However, according to the people who were walking around cleaning, they said that they had actually seen Joseph sneaking out of the hotel room that same morning. So Joseph was lying. As they were questioning Mr. Joseph, the police officers would receive the information that Velvine had actually passed on from her injuries. The three fractures to her spinal cord, her ruptured cervix, and on top of that, it was also reported that Velvine had bodily fluids consistent with sexual assault. Now, as soon as the police received this information, so did the media houses, and they let the Kenyan people know of exactly what happened to Velvine. Now, you would have thought that many people would band together and acknowledge that this is not right, this is not how people should be treating each other, etc. But the saddest part is that the Kenyan public was actually divided as to what they should think with regards to Ms. Velvine's murder. Many of the Kenyan public came out with comments like this.